<clears throat> G'day and welcome to Fastlane Dad's review of the Ford Everest. We've had it for just over a week now and uh, yeah, it's gone on well with the family. We've done going out, we've done football, we've done the sport run, the soccer run, the school run. It's played nicely all week. Let's go and have a look inside. So there are two versions of the Ford Everest. There's the 4x2, which is this one here, and there's the 4x4 as well. The two main differences are, one is four-wheel drive and one is not. That's only one difference. Oh yeah, that's the only difference. Exactly the same as each other, basically. The 4x2 doesn't come in an any better spec than a trend, which is a bit of a shame, really. I think Ford have missed a trick there. It's still got wonderful tech. It's still got a fabulous array of colours to choose from. So, you know, it's not all poverty in here. So let's have a look in the back. This seat is in position for me. I'm six foot tall. There is, I'm sitting back. There's loads of room in between me and my head. There's loads of room here in front. There's one pocket in the back of the seat. There's a bit of storage in the door. There's actually not as much storage in this car as I thought there'd be. It's not a deal breaker, but I just thought there'd be more. Right, what else is here? Got a couple of extra cup holders in here, very handy providing there's nobody in the way. Material's very hard wearing. It's a little bit scratchy, uh, but that's, again, not a deal breaker. It's a tough car. It's tough material. It's gonna take a lot of abuse, and I think that's really where the heart of this car is. It is in the grind, it's in the dirt, it's in, you know, it's in everyday life. The other thing about being in the back of this car is that you can control your own heating, like so. Also, the other awesome thing about this car is it's got an inverter built in. That's clever. I think the Ford Everest, especially the 4x2 version, is definitely positioned in the right area of the market. Because it's not an off-roader, really, but it's not a soft-roader either. It's got so much capability off-road, so much more than a soft-roader, not quite as much as the 4x4 version, obviously. Um, it certainly doesn't have all the, uh, the switchable tricky bits that you can, you know, do sand or rocks or any of that. But if you're towing a trailer, you've got fire trails to go down, you've got off-road capability requirements, it's definitely worth it. Seven seats, big and rugged, sits high on the road, it's got a 3,000 kilo towing capacity, it's made for Australia. Ford, well done. Now Ford have updated the range a lot in recent times, and I've got to say, I like it a lot. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, I love it. I think the wide mouth grille, is really imposing on the road. I think it's, I like the look, it's, it's aggressive without being too aggressive. It's a bit blingy without being too blingy. A bit like me. Now the Everest comes with 18 inch alloys as standard. I'm not actually sure if you're able to upgrade. I would imagine you are to the larger size that are available on the four wheel drive. I haven't really done enough research there. I'll let you do that. So with this 4x2 Everest effectively being exactly the same as a 4x4, apart from the fact that it's only two-wheel drive, it's still got the higher clearances 
and it's got the bigger wading capacity that you would expect of a four-wheel drive so you, you can still go where most mere mortal cars cannot however for me I think the steps can be a bit of a pain in the butt so when you're getting in and out right this one of my uh, one and one and one of my only gripes about this car so I'll get out and, and, and it's I've got to step down and then I rub my leg on the sill and if it's dirty I get dirty I'm actually just looking around a car park and they've all got sills they're all full drives he hasn't got any on his this dude look this this guy can you see him where is he is he gone oh he's gone he's over there that that dude driving off he hasn't got any sills on his but this this guy's got sills here so here's my this is my point right about sills and four-wheel drives it's a bit of a pain so look look at this look at this guy's sill right i'm sure he won't mind so he gets in and out of the car you've got a clean spot right that means you've got dirty trousers so under the hood it's got the 3.2 litre five cylinder turbo diesel engine it's got power it's got some torques it goes well now we've got a push button it's also got a little button you double click on the key fob to open up this monstrous boot that you've got with the seven seats up okay i'm joking it's not really monstrous at all but there's enough room for seven bags of shopping which i proved before uh, there's enough room for a drone that we're going to have a play with and there's enough room for some nerf guns now with the seven seats down uh, it does give you a huge boot space then and obviously we've got more than enough room for all this stuff that i've got in the boot we've got the drone the drone's bag we've got a phone old phone we've got a nerf gun there's plenty more room besides i think even i could get in here let's shift up shift up <laughs> yeah so there we go, all that drone stuff, and me. And there we go, easy as that. Also, no lip at the back, so you can just slide stuff in and out, easy. We've driven it for a week. I've enjoyed driving it, I can't lie. It's good enough to be on the road all the time, and it's good enough to be off-road some of the time. So, if that's the sort of criteria that you're looking for, then this is definitely something that should be on your shopping list. Okay, so let's wrap this test drive up. Should you go and buy it? Should you make it a consideration? Go for a test drive. Should you see, not touch it with a barge pole? It's definitely a solid B. It is definitely go and test drive it, do your homework, do a bit more research because this is unique in the segment. This isn't your run of the mill soft roader, wannabe four wheel drive. This actually has got the capability to be rugged and tough like a four wheel drive but more so than a soft rotor so it's definitely square in the middle so well done to Ford you found this niche I think in the market certainly here in Australia where camping is a consideration boating is a consideration you know and they don't always flow with four wheel drive so you've got a bit more economy with the four by two than a four by four um, also, it's a bit lighter on the road, so the steering feels a little bit lighter. You haven't got the drive shafts and all the torque converter gearboxy stuff going on underneath that makes the steering feel a bit heavy. It's a lot lighter from that perspective. I like the way it drives on the road. It's big, it's powerful, it feels tough. So it's definitely something you should go and visit the showroom for a look at. So that's my review of the Ford Everest. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching this far. If you did, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. If you're uh, not a subscriber to the channel, please do so. I'm not sure where the button is. If you've got any questions that I haven't covered in this review, please put them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer them. I always keep an eye on the comments. And I'll be back with another review very soon. I've been Fastlane Dad. Thanks for watching.